Skinny Hussain, welcome to Boxing Deep Dive, mate. Hello, Lyndon. How you been, buddy? Really good, mate, and I uh, really appreciate you coming on. Of course, I've got my uh, my sidekick there, Grant Tazzy Brown, that you know very, very well. 100%. I know him to be the 18th best fighter to come out of Tasmania. Oh, here we go, mate. Where are you going with this, brother? Like, <laughs> brother, it's, it's barge you that many times. If I can get under 50 in New South Wales, I'll be stoked. As good as you... As good as you could punch, Bolo, I never got stopped by her, so let's just leave it at that. Okay, well, we'll leave that there, yep. <laughs> yep. He reckons no. he used to um, give you a bit of a touch-up back in Spar and Skinny. No, he told me the other said day. That. I never said that. <laughs> when I tell you what, he's the best <laughs> holder. He used to wrestle pretty good. Any so Femme May was good yeah. back then, brother. He would have, he done some enormous takedowns and elbows. He's as rough as they come, Tazzy. Hey, um, when, when you had to spar Skinny and Hussain, Hussain, Hussain and Victor Chinian regularly, you do whatever you can do. You hold, you, you bite, you do whatever, mate. But um, now, look, I've sparred Skinny a lot of times, mate. There's not a more menacing puncher. And I honestly say this, I've sparred Costa Zoo. Costa Zoo didn't go hard on me, mind you. Mm. But I've sparred Chuck, I've sparred Billy Dib, Hussey, Vic, love more to do. Um, the hardest I've been hit in sparring is by Skinny with the left hook. Left hook and left rib. Yeah. But one left hook in particular, I've seen stars and um, a vicious puncher. But good box too. Very good yeah. left jab. Very underrated boxer, Skinny. But he's one of the best mm. of um, one of the best in my era anyway, mate. So much respect. We're brothers. We're good mm. friends. But from a personal thing, as a, as a fighter, Nadell was one of the, the best fighters I've seen in a long time, mate. Yeah, Great I was fun. only um, I was only joking there. Thanks, Skinny, he actually has been very, very complimentary of you. And uh, no, I know. Oh, I was just honest, mate. He's a, yeah, what a great era, mate. He's just a great yeah. fighter. As simple as that. Yeah. So, Skinny, mate, I just want to uh, just quickly go over a bit of your career. I, mean, I obviously know you pretty well from back in the day. It was, geez, back about yeah. twenty-five years ago with your brother um, Hussey. Yeah, Hussey actually yeah. obviously represented Australia at the Olympics and Commonwealth Games and World Championships and that. You had the unfortunate. Um, situation of running up against uh, Bomber Peden um, every time the, the selections come around. Just tell us a little about those days back with Bomber. Well, like I said, Hussey came down a lot because I was meant to come to, to Bantamweight and fly James Swan. But I didn't want people to call me a dog and avoid Bomber because... So I, I fought Bomber, but, you know, I won the last fight against Bomber. It was a walkover. He didn't make weight. Oh, is that so right? I can't have the <laughs> They gave me the gold medal on walkover, so what I thought all the time was free one. Was that, what, 96, 95, maybe? 95, 95, 95. Yeah, 95, because I remember the 96 Olympic trials, and, um, yeah, yeah. He, was, he was just a different piece, wasn't he, uh, Bomber? He's just, he's just probably one of the, if not the best amateur we've ever had, I think. The best. Uh, he'll, he'll, be cl he'll be close to it. Mm. Him, Justin yeah. Rouse, or a couple of other guys, but, yeah. yeah. He, he, he was, mate, he, he could punch like a mule as well. Yeah. Like a lot of the amateurs are good boxers, but he was a power puncher. He 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 he, he, he tried to hurt you with everything. It was a little bit. I'll let you go in a second, here, Tazzy. But it was a little bit frustrating that um, of all the fighters you got to have out there was uh, was uh, Bomber Peden. And I was a little bit. I was sort of lucky because when I sort of came into it, um, it was ninety two. I think it was I, I sort of made the team that first year. So I was lucky. It was the Olympic year. So all the I think Stefan Scriggins moved on and sort of opened the way. And it was a whole yeah. new wave of fighters coming in, but um, Bomber, that was his first year, and I remember I got cleaned up by Richie Rolls in the 93 Nationals, and thought, well, that's it for me, I'm never making a team again, and lucky for me, he went up to a light middleweight, so I took the worldweight spot, but um, it just all comes about well, time, mate, Rich, it? Richie did it to everyone. Yeah, he did, he did. Richie did it, he did yeah. it to everyone. He did. You got a couple of questions there for Skinny, Tazzy? Yeah, look, I know a lot about Skinny's story, um, he started, I think it was a Canary PCYC, John Talpool and another coach there. Skinny, look, one thing you're known for as a junior, incredible knockouts as a junior. Like, not, I mean, not many knockouts in the amateurs in general, but in, especially in the juniors, you were making kids do backflips and like, put them on stretches. I mean, you know, when you develop that power, you stay at 54. I know you won the 92, 93, 94 junior 54 titles in a row. And then you went up as a senior to 57. But Skinny, um, when you discovered you had that power and you went on a bit of a winning streak, tell me a bit about them amateur days at PCY titles, state titles, etc. 
Well, I'll tell you what, when I, when I first started, man, honestly, from when I was 10 to 13, I'd sort of win one and lose two. So my record was very, was very sketchy. Like, I wasn't committed. We sang around the, at the police citizens in, in our, play arcade games all day. Even that Hussey was very dedicated and Billy, Billy at the time would go to tournaments. They would win, I would lose. I was like, until, until I was 13, I think I was seven and 13 at the time. But then when I hit 14, I hit puberty. I don't know what happened, man. But I, I, I beat the guys that were beating me in, in earlier days. And I, and I I think I won 40 on the trot. So I, I never lost as a junior. Wow. So I never lost as a junior. And and in honesty, like, maybe 80% of them were knockouts. Hmm. Not stoppages. Yeah. But they were knockouts. Like yeah. head, head shots. I wasn't in the these body. Days. Yeah. Well, so, funny, so in 92, I know the Nationals in 90, in Alice Springs, 92, you stopped a great fighter, James Stanley, who ended mm. up being a great fighter. Mm. 93 Nationals, I was in the Nationals, I was the division of blow, you 51, Rip, I fought your cousin yeah. Puzz. You stopped Pierre Karam, great fighter, and um, I'm not sure who you beat in the final. Um, yeah, Adelaide, then, Adelaide boy. You beat, you beat guys like Paul Gibson, Casey Johns, I mean, not Casey Johns, Casey... Um, Lance Cox. What's his name? Mm. Lance Cox, Lance Cox, Paul Gibson, you knocked them guys out. Um, and you were just, yeah, you just keep clean up everyone. Casey Thompson, um, there's a lot of guys. Um, you beat Ramiel Masri, you knocked out. Um, what's his name? Um, Damien Dennis. Uh, Damien Dennis, yeah, you knocked out Damien Dennis. I mean, incredible. Mm. And may oh, I, I say something too? Wagon, but... okay. was that 92 to 94, I sort of. It was just my coming out thing. I, I don't know. Maybe I matured. Maybe on when I got a few wins, I was more confident as a fighter. Before that, yeah. I, I didn't back myself. But you know, but we we had a good stable of fighters back at Canberra PCYC. We had a lot of professional yeah. guys that we used to move around with. Ricky Reina was a regular there. Paul Nazari and all them kind of guys. They were professionals, and we looked up to them back in the days. We moved around by Neil Baratello. So we, even as young amateur kids. We always had sparring with the pros. We never sparred blokes our yeah. size, our weight. It wasn't like that back then. Your trainers didn't protect you from yourself. They let you. And you're jumping you up the As a junior, you're jumping up and fighting scenes like Trent McKenzie and Aaron Everett. Like you were come down yeah. to Tasmania. You had a few you know controversial decisions there, but you were um you was only a kid. You were fighting men. You know what I mean. So, also to a bit of history here in. 94, I was the same weight as Skinny at Cronulla. Everyone jumped out of the 54 division because it was Nadell's last year. It was only me and a Queenslander, Tony Norford, stayed in the division. Everyone went to featherweight. Skinny got the bye and I fought Tony Norford and um, got disqualified. So he fought Skinny in the final. Thank God I didn't have to fight Could him. Could have been a whole not, different story, know, mate. Could have been sitting there as former opponents, not just friends. But not just then. In then 95, my first year as a senior... At 17 back then, now it's 19. It was in Tasmania and I was 17. I only, only had the one fight for the year. I, I was very, I wasn't matured as a man or nothing. And my division had Skinny and Bomber in the same division. So oh, dad, dad helped me back that year. He said, give it a miss this year and just go and spectate. So I I'll give why. that Nationals a miss. Well, it was a smart idea because I, I would have got stopped by either one of them. I wasn't strong enough at that time in my career. That's just yeah. being honest. So skinny, you turned pro in nineteen ninety seven uh, in Bankstown um, with a it looks like a unanimous six round decision over Roberto Ruiz. So, so you went along, and I see you also you had a, a win over uh, Quaint Oyster, know pretty well with Nathan Sting. Now he was actually a pretty good fighter in the day, but since here you actually stopped him in the first round. It was there an injury? You actually knocked him out? Yeah, I stopped. Yeah, him. I, got, I got rid of him. Yeah, Nathan was a good fighter. Man. Yeah, he was yeah, good fighter. Yeah. Tasmania too. Yeah, oh, he was. Sorry, yeah, he was a Tazzy, Tazzy Yeah, yeah. Nathan was a good fighter, decorated. Like he went over to England, won the WU title. Yeah. For Arnel Baratello, Johnny Binge, and was a couple of times, two times Australian champion. But mate, I I never I trained hard for Nathan Sting. Uh, it was before the Pacquiao fight. So I was going to say that, yeah. I, I was at I was at my finest form to be completely honest. It was the best I ever felt as a fighter. I made weight good. I never usually make weight good. I made weight good, and I jumped in. I jumped on him early, and I got him out of there. 
Yeah, mm. I'm not actually, I didn't. I wasn't aware that you actually fought Nathan, so I'll see if I can find that on YouTube. But obviously, as you said, after that was a bloke from the Philippines named Manny Pacquiao. He went over there in 2000, fought him for the WBC International Super Bantamweight title, and um, there's a little bit of uh, controversy involved in this one, mate. Wait, the controversy is going to start before it started before the fight, mate. They treated us like animals before the fight. They carried on, and then they gave us different gloves. They, they, like, like when we gloved up and we got in the ring, his glove had no logo on him. Like my gloves got red on it. If you see my gloves, it's got white writing on them. His gloves are plain red. So they gave him punches gloves, and I don't know what they gave me, but it wasn't it wasn't the gloves he had on. And then we got promised an American referee. Yeah. And the guy ended up being an American Filipino. Is that Carlos Padilla? Is that him? That's the, yeah, that's he done Ryan Fraser. Own, you know, he, yeah, and he done Hearns and yeah. Moran as well, I remember. But so tell he us about Hearns, the fight. He best fight. Yeah, he did, yeah. So tell us about the fight itself, mate. So this was so this is before, I think, Pacquiao went to the States, wasn't it? Obviously he won a world title, but it was before he hooked up with Freddie Roach, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, he, he was a lightweight champion the year before that. He went up, he... he, he Mate, because he used to cut a lot of weight, he jumped to the division. Yeah. But before he, I fought him, he fought Todd Macklin, fought Arnel Baratella. He was on a good run. He was knocking out good Japanese guys that were 20 and 0, 25 and 0. So we knew we had a we had a fight on our hands, but we also knew that we could beat it. We can beat him. Yeah. I think I think the next fight after this, he went over to America and beat. Uh, Fire oh, Bungu. Yeah, IBF uh, title wasn't yeah. it? Bungu. Bungu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, not Bungu. It wasn't Bungu. It was someone. It else. wasn't Bungu. Uh, okay. Le Guaba. Le Guaba. Le Guaba. Oh, Le Guaba. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah see true. if I can find it. Right here. I'm on here. Yeah, Bungu lost. Bungu lost in a sim the the fight before that. Yeah, actually, he had one. He had a couple of fights after this. He beat um, Senrima and Prowet. Looks like here after that, and then fought yeah Lalo Le, 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 Le Guaba, I think it is for the IBF. Guaba, yeah. Super Bannerweight mm -hmm. title. So tell us about, you said before it was pretty hostile over there. What was it like fighting there in front of all those Filipinos over there? I suppose we used to them coming to, here to Australia and copping it. What was it like being there amongst it all? Yeah, well, I mean, they don't play fair there, bro. That's honest truth. The crowd was very vocal. They threw stuff into the ring. Uh, like, like I, I did some things that were unethical. That's honest truth. But as a fighter, I was frustrated. To the week leading up to the fight, no, they put us in a hotel. And there's three the hours away from the venue. He's um, down. Who put who puts a fighter in a hotel three hours away from the venue? Yeah, and makes you drive up on the day of the fight. Wow. Like, so what's a long count here, mate. Hey? So sorry, I've already sorry, counted fifteen. Here, what was going through your, your mind here, there, counting. Skinny? Where you've you've knocked him down? What's happening here? And the long count, by the way. I, 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 honestly, I don't I don't remember nothing. Yeah. All all I remember was when he cut me. That's honestly, that's all I remember. And I remember it was his shoulder blade that cut me, and I told the ref at the time, and the referee got, no, no, it was a punch. Mm. He's just bullying him like a little rag doll. This is Peter's favourite fighter here getting thrown around by yeah. an Australian. <laughs> 15 seconds, seconds I, counted, I counted just then. 15 seconds. Yeah. And, and um, Skinny, obviously you're part of Team Fennec as well. How did Jeff uh, react after all this, this was over? Well, let me, let me say, they, they had to bring the army in to get us out of there. Is that right? Jeff did, ca Jeff did carry on. Jeff did throw bottles back into the crowd. And <laughs> and I'll tell you that, we, we weren't going to win that fight. And then after the fight, the trainer came up to me and I sort of followed him around the ring as well. So we didn't sort of do ourselves any justice. Yeah. Have you remained like, with friends with Pacquiao since then? Or was pretty much yeah, yeah. out of here and... No, he's a good guy, mate. Pac's a good guy. Yeah. I, so I seen him. I spent time with him in 02 and 04, 05. Uh, I fought on his undercard, I think. Yeah. No, not his. Hasi for Arce on his undercard. So we spent time with him there. But yeah. I, I, I had no problems with Pacquiao whatsoever. My problem was with Padilla. I'm just happy I didn't see Padilla after the fight. Yeah. Because I think I would have been in jail. Yeah. What was the crowd on, on, on the night there, mate? How many people do you think were there? 8,000. 8, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty hostile, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but we're, we're fighting two and a half hours out of Manila. Mm. So, so I, 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 I don't know, man. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, have we lost uh, Skinny there? Hang on, we'll go back to... Uh, we haven't lost him. I've just lost him on screen. So we'll go back. Sorry, Skinny, we lost you there. With So with yeah. uh, after this fight, you then fought for the WBU Super Bantamweight title against Jaime Barcelona. And that was in Bankstown Jan- as well. So you won yeah. a 12-round decision yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, was that that one? Yeah, and also had a win, I see, before that over Delroy Price in England. So you, you, And then, obviously, in America as well against Morales. So you, you definitely got around a little bit back in the day, fighting in other people's backyards. Well, the fight before that, I fought in Scotland for the Commonwealth title. Yeah. I went over, I fought Sting. I fought this guy. Then I think I went over to Scotland again, or England, fought Delroy Price, went to America, and fought Joe Morales. But I was honestly sick of traveling. I didn't want to. I told Jeff I hated fighting overseas. Mm. I, I enjoyed England, but I, I didn't like America. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, everything in America was just was too hard, mate, America. Yeah. We well, went back in 2002 and fought Ronnie L- Longer Kid, I think that's pronounced the name, on the Tyson Lewis undercard yeah. in Memphis. Yeah, you know what the funny thing is? I went all the way to America, and you know what they gave me? A Filipino opponent. Oh. <laughs> I thought I was going to get a Mexican, they gave me a Filipino. Yeah, six and three was, so no slouch. But so what was it like fighting on the only card of that? It must have been massive. I mean, one of the biggest heavyweight fights of all time. Mate, the, the, the truth of the matter is I fought. I was first fight of the night. I fought at four o'clock in the afternoon. The only people that were in the crowd was the judges and the security guards. There wasn't a soul in sight. Oh, geez. Must have been a few reporters here, Skinny. A couple of news people. Yeah, maybe. They would have bagged me anyway. I didn't fight too well. So you fought, <laughs> after that, you fought um, in Indonesia, of all places, against uh, Buddy yeah, Wilson. Yeah. And then a couple of fights later, that looks like you fought on the zoo undercard in uh, in Melbourne, on the nope. Telstra Dome. In Melbourne? Yep. And I think, I think I had three fights in Japan. I like Japan as a... as a, Japan are pretty fair, man. Good people. Yeah. Respectful. They're, they're as fair as they come. Yeah, I want to go to Japan one day. So um, then you have I a... do for boxing. So you had another couple of cracks at the world title after that. You, you fought Oscar Larios in uh, at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas uh, for the WBC Super Bantamweight title and then later against Scott Harrison for the WBO Featherweight title. So uh, I think, was that your last crack at the world title? I think that was it, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, uh, 05. Yeah. But well, on, on, honest truth, I, my, my career was done after the the, the, the Pacquiao fight. Yeah. Yeah. I, I before the Pacquiao fight... Mate, I taped every boxing event. I watched every fight. I bought every single magazine. Then after I fought this guy and it gave me a sour taste, I threw every magazine I had out. I threw every video tape I had out. I, I, you know, I wasn't a diehard fan anymore. It just, mm. it, it, so, I, I honestly fought for the sake of fighting. Yeah. I, just, I just thought mm. I owed myself the duty of, I, I couldn't retire after that, mm. but I fought for the sake of fighting. You see me fight against Larios and against, Scott Harrison. It's like, it's like I didn't want to be there. Not that they hurt me or they were better than me. It's just their will to win was greater than mine. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, that Larios card, that was a big one. That was Antonio Barrera and and Morales. And as you said, number three, um, in yes. the classic fights. Uh, Rafael Rafael Marquez fought on the undercard as well, and Kelly yeah. Kelly Pavlich as well. So and promoted by top rank. So okay. would have been great to be and part Golden of that Boy. anyway. Yeah, MGM and Golden Grand. Boy. Mate, it was a good card to be on. It was like. Awesome cards, awesome show, but you, your headspace has got to be right. Mm. That, that's yeah. that's the main thing that comes down in boxing, mm. your headspace. Yeah. And I, I think after this fight, I hated the sport. Mm. I, hated, I hated the ethics of the sport, the politics of the sport. And, 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 and on, honestly, you see a lot of fighters that after they take certain losses, the loyal is never the same after Trinidad. You know, Mel, Mel, Meldrick Taylor was never the same after Chavez. So, so how did you get the? Same you same. retired in two thousand and seven after your loss in Japan uh, for the OPBF yeah. Super Featherweight title. How how long after that did it take you to get the love back? Because obviously you're, you're involved in the body your body punch gym these days, and um, you know you're, you're you're a player back in boxing. And how long did it take to get that love? For eleven years. Back? Eleven eleven years. Is that right? Eleven years to get it back. Yeah, but, yeah he was a grouch. He was a grouch for eleven years. <laughs> a grouch. So tell us about that these days then, Skinny. You're at the Body Punch Gym. Tell us your involvement there and, and, and what's the go there at the moment. Well, I've got my own gym. Got, like my, my brother caters more for fighters. Yep. I'm more of a, a boxer size, get fit kind of concept of training. 
Uh, I, I don't really want fighters. I don't really need fighters. But I've got a few guys I want to fight. It's only fair. They've been in the gym a couple of years. So I, I've got a few blacks that fight. I've got the current Australian waterweight champion there. But like I said, I, I, I like training guys like my age, you know, overweight. They want to get fit. They want to come and hit the bag. They want to learn the, the art of boxing. And, and that's the sort of the attraction, the crowd I, I kind of get. Mm. Where do you see the current scene in Australian boxing, mate? How's it ranked to, to when you were around? What are you and who who are you some of your favourite Aussie fighters? I, I think there's more opportunity for fighters these days. Yeah, there's more promoters out there. They're getting paid more. We didn't we didn't make money as fighters. Mm. Everyone thought because we we're on TV we made money. Tassie knows we didn't make money as fighters. We actually lost money as fighters. Mm. Yeah, me me as a gym owner, I make more money now than I do as a fighter. It's sad, isn't it? I mean, that's and you're right. A lot of people don't think uh, about that. They think you're on TV and fighting these these types of fights. You're making uh, millions, but obviously it's not like that. But uh, you're right. Now that I, I got, remember. Yeah, go ahead, Tazzy. I, I remember being with Skinny. I think fight he was fighting at Bankstown one time, and I went outside with him. Wait, he was waiting to get rid of some some last minute tickets outside the night of the fight, mate. That was just the the way it was back then, mate. Just um. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely it's um, a hustle. Yeah, mm. yeah, have to hustle, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, no, that's all good, mate. We'll we'll let you go. So you obviously had a, a big day, and you've uh, you've helped us out in a few of our shows tonight. So I really appreciate it, mate. And um, yeah, one of the uh, most underrated uh, Aussie fighters, I think, out there, uh, mate. And um, it was obviously a pleasure to, to box back with you in the day. And uh, great that you're uh, you, you've hit the ground running as uh, as a trainer these days. Thanks, Simpson. You're a good man, mate. Thanks, Taz. I just want to say, Skin, before you go, mate, it's been obviously a credit being a, a training partner, Jim, Jim Bean, but also being a, um, a dear friend, mate. You and your family are royalty in Australian boxing and you can't get Thanks. anyone better than the Usain, Usain brothers and you're the cheekiest out of them all, but you're my, you're my dear brother for life, mate. God bless you. It's because I speak the truth. It's not cheeky. Yeah, I'm speaking the truth. <laughs> See you, boys. Well, um, Thanks, mate. Thanks, Kitty. Thanks, 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 Tazzy. Bye, mate. Thanks, Kitty.